So, ladies and gents, welcome. This should be a really fun series here, and it is such an important series here in Group D. Leary is favored to be in first or second place at this point, and he is currently at eight wins, having played three rounds. Now, we saw Viper's fourth round the other day, uh, Viper versus Classic Pro, and that 3-0 for Viper was huge, as that puts Viper two wins ahead of Leary. Leary, though, is favored to maybe even 3-0 this series, which is what uh, Viper did to Sobek, for example. And if Leary does that, he then surpasses the Viper and then goes into the first place spot. Now, the big series everyone's waiting for is Leary Viper, which is the final series of this group. So uh, as we see Leary go forward with his eagle here to maybe try and steal some things here to start off the series, um, I should mention that even if Leary loses a game today, he's going to be tied with Viper then, right? Um, and then whoever wins that Viper series like 2-1 either way or 3-0 either way, is going to still be in first place. So there's no massive concerns for Leary unless he gets 3-0'd. Then if he gets 3-0'd, then suddenly Tato is competing against Viper to potentially get first. So here comes Leary. Now, for Sobek, and it, sorry, by the way, I know you guys want to hear about the games, but especially because this is like the, this is the last week now, it is so important that I do this. So I, I saw a couple comments. You know, it, it's tough. The, the tough comments kind of stick with you as a content creator but a couple people were like talk about the game well yeah but the, the, we're, we're gonna have plenty of time for that right so the, just to finish my thought is leary is here he should never try and take these boars these boars are way too far away to justify he can try and block the villager though and this could kill the villager and well played sobek he actually blocked the the boar there so his villager was protected um, Sobek needs three wins from the next two rounds, okay? He needs to get three wins somehow. And that's going to be really tricky, because his final round is then going to be up against Tato. So yeah, that was a lot of information. Sorry, got a little distracted. I blame Leary's Eagle for that. Good work there from Sobek. Many players would lose the Villager there. Here, Leary hoping to get a kill. Leary could always go back for that kill. Leary's being a real pest with this eagle. He left his base really early, so I'm curious to see how many resources he actually collected. And Sobek's going to want to go for scouts, and his starting scout's going to be weak now, which could affect things slightly. As Sobek, just mildly inconvenienced by this, does realize that he needs to build his house a little bit faster, and brings the boar in no problem. Wanted to see, did Leary find all his res right away? Yeah, so it seems to me like Leary found his resources really quickly. And that might have been the biggest part of why he chose to go forward here. Uh, otherwise, you might see some players go forward without finding their sheep. But you start with the extra llama if you're Incas. And then he also found all the goats. So it should be pretty easy for Leary to just come home now. And if he wants to push in an ostrich or two, he should be in a good spot. But yeah, um, you've got Sobek at two wins. You've got Vivi at two wins. And you've got Classic Pro at three. And... Uh, Vivian Classic Pro have already played four rounds. And Vivian Classic Pro will play each other, which means the lowest score that uh, I guess Sobek could be competing against is four. Um, so that would be like if Vivi won 2 1, which would be the best case scenario, I suppose, for Sobek. But then Sobek would, he can't tie on four necessarily because, uh, you know, there's then a tiebreaker, and he did lose to Classic Pro, and he did lose to Vivi 2-1. Should mention, by the way, the very first tiebreak is actually sets one. Um, but it would be likely that Sobek would, would be tied on sets one as well. But there is a world where you can win on the tiebreak against someone who you had lost to in the group stage, as long as you had another set one. Okay, so Leary's on the way up. We've been seeing a lot more Incas here because of the discount they have on all their their options as far as food goes. Incos make sense uh, if you want to go archers, and Leary, fantastic with archers. He's made the barracks at a time where we could see militia, but he's not making them yet. He's just headed over to gold. On this side, Sobek's on the way up, and Sobek, um, similar to Classic Pro in this group, very aggressive player, and I expect a big fight from him. Like Even though Sobek only has two wins, I actually think Sobek's had a pretty solid showing in this group, and... I think he's shown what he's capable of. He's not afraid to play open maps against a player like, like Leary. He is picking strategy, which gives him as a player the best chances of success. The problem, though, very similar to what we had said as Classic Pro... Or, or, sorry, uh, Sobek really wants to attack this eagle. 
Uh, the problem is just the similarities and the fact that if you're a player who likes to play these, these strong open maps, and you're then playing against Leary, who is one of the best at that, you are still not going to be favored. But not trying to play against his skill set, which is, I think, a good mindset. There's the stable from Sobek. Sobek was able to kill Leary's eagle. So I, I don't think Leary was heavily punished for going forward with the eagle, but normally you don't want to lose that. And the positive, obviously, is he does probably assume his opponent's going scouts, but then he also he sees uh, the opponent's base layout. So he, he's scouted his opponent. Ooh, Spearman for Leary actually kills the scout there from Sobek. That's a little sloppy from Sobek. So, neither player with a lot of vision right now. And this Spearman is following the birds. Follow me! I will take you to the enemy! <laughs> it definitely looks like the Spearman's following the bird. I'm not that crazy. And bird's gonna fly away. Spearman's gonna have to, to stick by the stable here. So, once Sobek gets a second scout, I really like to see him move out there, try and find some damage. The forward spear from Leary's really not going to accomplish much here. And we have an early range as well for Sobek. A lot of players opt to, to spend the wood on farms early. Uh, he has not done that. And he's got a bit of TC idle time thus far, just struggling with the food because he has spent so much wood on that. And what I've seen with the Incas is just like they keep the barracks producing spearmen and eagles combined with the archers, and it's just two production buildings versus one. And. As you can see, Leary might have had the forward spearman, but now there's the defensive spearman, and Leary's got three spears with another on the way, and he's just going to look to try and smother his opponent here. Now, if this was any other sieve, like if this wasn't a mezzo sieve, you wouldn't have this eagle. And then this this little pressure here would be silly because the skirmishers could kill you. But because of the presence of the eagle, there's potential. Uh, Sobek's still looking for potential kills over here, but he also has to defend himself over here. And he actually has some weak villagers from earlier in the game due to the eagle, and Leary's going right for them. Kind of hard to prep for this if you're Sobek, beyond just running away. He's done the right thing to fight off some of this stuff with villagers. And he does also have the skirmishers here, so the archer's really the main threat, and archers could be dealt with. Scouts also for Sobek have pulled away, which is important to note. So, you know, not the prettiest game thus far for Sobek. He does lose some of his skirmishers too, and he's down two villagers because of the idle time, but also the losses there. But definitely could have been worse for him, and, and maybe a bit of army snowball is possible. I would say my concern is the lack of consistency economically in some ways. I, there's been a bit more standing around time throughout all that. Um, what Capture Age doesn't track is when villagers are moving, but not really collecting a resource. So there was a lot, I just noticed a lot of villagers standing around. And for Leary, I mean, just two minutes of total idle eco time. The, the idle TC time even is just two seconds. So it seems really clean for Leary. Having said all that, though, Leary doesn't have many farms at the moment. Now, he's known for loving to go for the for the hunt and just walking around. But we'll see if Leary will maybe struggle to get to Castle Age compared to Sobek. Sobek is spending a lot more food, though, with the skirms and the scouts. So you got to think that, you know, things are going to end up being relatively okay for Leary. We have 40 bucks per win. And then obviously the standings in the group stage and Leary is guaranteed to go into the playoffs. So back, I don't think he knew an awful lot about the situation there. Just skirted right by and... Well, Leary is going to be able to be Walt. And it's going to be relatively hard for Sobek to really break Leary now. But yeah, it's just going to be the Eagles that are the problem, right? Eagles are going to be a real force in Castle Age. And these skirmishers, just running by the TC here temporarily. The skirmishers will be out there to kill any potential archers or kill any spearmen. But Sobek's probably going to want to play through stable units. So any spearmen you can kill, any archer you can kill with the skirms, great. But ultimately, I don't think you really want to have too many skirms in the long run here. But the thing is, he doesn't know. It's not like there's a flag for every single eagle that's in there. He doesn't know how many eagles are in there. And Leary's known for going for lots of archers. So from what Sobek can see at the moment, he, he's he's kind of unable to make any real guesses as to what Leary will go for. He could see that Leary doesn't have many archers. He can also see that Leary might not be producing out of this range. 
The Sobek wants damage here. He wants to punish Leary for playing so passive. And Leary had dropped the market, so maybe, you know, showed his hand a little bit that he was going to buy and sell resources. And Sobek's going to dive. I really like how messy this is going to make things for Leary. It's an interesting play here from Sobek. So he's in, and, you know, the positive for him, even though he might not kill much here, I'd love to see him get a villager kill. The positive for him is now he knows his opponent's going into Eagles. Because Leary has to show his hand. Leary has to come back. Sobek, of course, keeping Leary's eagles at his own base. And you know, Leary wants to kind of all in this one. Just now adding the second barracks. Leary's army count's going to be great. I don't feel as though the economy's really all that good at the moment, though. He is going to wall this. So Sobek's not able to get away with the scouts. Now, Sobek needs to click up, and Sobek needs to make sure he's walled. As long as he clicks up, and as long as he is walled, I think he is still okay here. Still lacking the gold, and oh man, the idle TC. It's like, you can tell he's waiting now to click up, and there he goes. So 30 seconds away from the next stage is Leary, who probably could just ignore these scouts for a moment now. I mean, not fully ignore. I feel like one eagle could come over and deal with this. And Leary's now running to the middle with villagers. Now that's four villagers, so I'm thinking he's going to buy some stone and drop a TC. And there's stable number two for Sobek here. Well, Sobek's still running around. And, you know, he's, he, he should have an idea of, of course, it's eagles, right? He obviously won't know about the action in the middle. Leary places a, a very interesting TC here. He places a TC where he'll be in more harm's way against the siege push than, than if he went over here. It's not really that sneaky. So Leary showing confidence that he's going to be able to hold the map control here as he goes past the stables here from Sobek. And Sobek's got south, scouts on the field, which is so important against Mezzo because Mezzo usually add eagles. And so this will probably be Lycav in combination with knights. But this castle age time from Leary is so sick. And Leary already about to have a TC up in the middle. Eco at home's looking pretty good. He didn't end up killing the scouts. And Sobek is a player who is promoted up from the lower league gold, right? So Sobek, he actually won his group. I think he had like 12 wins. It was it was not something that anyone really had predicted, Sobek winning his group. But he's been around a long time. He's not a new name. I mean, none of the players are really new. But I think for many of you guys, though, this might be the first tournament that you've maybe heard of him. But Sobek, I think, is a little overwhelmed with the amount of spots that are being attacked at the moment. And this just has to be dealt with. And this is just going to be horrible for Sobek. Oh! Okay, he realized. Oh my goodness. And then he also realizes Leary has the second TC. So, you know, it's going to be difficult for Sobek to be able to take engagements because Leary has so many units right now. But it is doable, right? Like, have to kill the monks. Knights to trade nicely against the eagles. It's not your typical Leary game, the game we're seeing here. He does get pop caps. He's had a bit of idle TC time as well. And we see the second town center for Sobek, so he's not too far behind on that. He still has plenty of gold and stone available on his hill. You're kind of torn between approaches right now. In some way, you want to be aggressive against the middle, and you don't want to give Leary time. But if you're too aggressive, if you force the issue and you don't have too many units, you could see it as regret later. If you're wondering why Sobek doesn't engage there, he doesn't engage because he knows Leary will just garrison inside that TC. That's a big talking point these days. Monks get so much value. So easy to just hide them inside the town center then. Sobek at least could keep the monks here if he continues to prowl with the light cab. He's going to make Leary work for it here. And just like that, Leary saves the monks, but it was close. Sobek has to run away. But he has brought Leary's Eagles to the middle. Leary's not really on stone. And then here we've got Sobek attacking the walls. And yes, I'm well aware that the Chilean flag is, is very similar to the Texas flag. <laughs> As an American, it... I don't know who it, where you guys are from who are saying that. As an American, it does bother me. And I am slightly embarrassed when people say that, though. Because <laughs> it makes us seem... <laughs> Uh, a little bit conceited, perhaps, but again, I have no clue where people are watching from, so. 
I picked up on that as well the first time. It actually, you know what it is? I think it's the way Capture Rage shows it. I think if it was like just the full flag, you'd be able to tell the difference. But it's the way Capture Rage shows it that it maybe masks part of the flag and, and makes that trickier. So, Sobek hanging in. Like, you know, the guy's got two wins, but he's really looking good. And he's building up stone to eventually go for a castle in the middle. And that's why I question this TC. I feel like a TC back here, I guess. No, at least with this TC, you have the possibility of falling back. And there you go again. Sobek diving in. Doesn't kill the monks. Leary hops into the TC. Leary's house walling everything. And my game just lagged. Sorry. Uh, Stonewalled even at home. But Leary just two town centers here, guys. Leary has 24 eagles. And those eagles, in combination with the monks, are deadly here. If those monks get conversions, that's going to be Leary's fight. It feels like the fight's going to happen soon. Oh, man. So where do you place that castle if you're Sobek? When do you place it? Do you wait? He's getting armor now, which is an important upgrade here. Leary just has plus one feudal age armor and plus one attack, but he's gone more for numbers, right? Numbers of monks and numbers of eagles. And honestly, I think that's going to be the difference maker here. I love how active he's been with the light cav, and he hasn't really given Leary opportunities to, uh, to be able to engage against the knights. And now Leary's advancing up the hill. And Leary, I think, realizing I don't want to take a fight where my opponent has the hill advantage... It feels like this game could come down to this moment right here. Sobek so badly needs wins. Yeah, of course, Leary fighting for first place, playoffs, all that. That's huge. But let's not forget about Sobek and what this moment means to him. He has to back away with the Knights. But he kind of has to fight here so his villagers don't go down. And all the monks are, are focused on villagers, or, or Knights rather. And so we see the fight. Leary with some house walling here. And he's peeled off the Knights that he's converted to go kill the villagers. Also, still being able to save his monks. Leary's losing a lot of eagles, but he's still going to have numbers on the field, and Sobek needs this castle to go up. This castle has to go up. If this castle doesn't go up, Leary can win this game right here. Because Leary's got pikemen, Leary still has the monks out here, and guys, I'm worried for Sobek. He doesn't have more villagers coming. I'm not seeing any more villagers making a run for this. The castle's at 70%. Leary simply focused down the villagers. And that castle is a Dow castle denied at 71%. And now all the monks have their faith back. And more knights can be converted. And you could just tell the thinking there for Sobek. He had to leave his knights here and engage against the eagles to save the vills. In doing so, knights got converted. And as we so often see from the biggest names, Leary just had enough. It was, it was just enough to deny the castle. Just enough to hold the position and... I think it gets really difficult now unless Leary loses all of his monks. If Leary loses all of his monks, there's still a chance for Sobek, who's coming in with the Vils. There's no better opportunity to go for it. You can't wait. You gotta go for it. Monks are down. There's still eagles, though. Sometimes players will just focus on the main fight here, and they won't focus down the Vils. I like how Leary's focusing down the Vils. Seems like an easy choice, though. There's not a whole lot else from Sobek here. And yet again, Sobek still can't get the castle up. And what's Leary gonna do? Well, Leary's just going to drop his own castle, and he's going to drop his castle right next to Sobek's castle. And, oh man, such a such a close game. Like, the opportunity was there for Sobek. But Leary, I, I, there's no way this castle gets denied now. He's on pikemen with the eagles, with the monks, and he has a TC in the middle. And there's no real reason to make cameos beyond the fact that they just look really cool. I think if you have the pikemen already teched into, you just make the pikemen out of the barracks. But I was going to say, he obviously could just continue on with Cameo, and Cameo could be really good against the knights as well. Um, a good first game here. Uh, we'll have to put the score up. I knew I was missing something. And a really good attempt from Sobek. Unfortunately for him, he just wasn't able to get enough army there. And honestly, the TC to me is a really, is the most interesting aspect of this whole game. Because if Leary had the TC back here, which is what I would have done, he wouldn't have been able to have his monks around in the middle. And the only reason his monks were able to freely, like, be safe and, and be present and near where that castle was going up 
was because of the TC. So the TC is actually brilliant for Leary. I mean, he used it perfectly anyways. And I, I wonder how this game would have gone if Leary would have dropped the TC here or here even. And then, you know, maybe the castle does go up for Sobek here or here. Sobek didn't have a lot of options, right? This was an option, but that's where the fight was taken. This was the other option and just didn't work out for him. As someone says, this feels like a throw. Uh, from who? I, I thought there was never a point where Sobek had a lead in that game. Leary just had a slight edge. He had slight ledge with control. And it really depended on how the fight would go. I think for Sobek, obviously, he he felt like he needed the fight to happen there. Once you're there with the Vils, you've got to commit. And maybe was a little forced there. But having played this type of matchup many times and having seen it many times, it's so tough against Mezzo. The Eagle Mass is always insane. There's a mix of pikes, and then the monks, if they get their conversions, the value is almost always there. The Sobek, 62 kills, 55 units lost. A reminder, though, for Sobek, while he does have that final round after this one, right, he's going to probably end up needing to get three wins from essentially the next five games. So hopefully for him, he can get one win, maybe this next one on his home map, to at least start the ball rolling there, build up some confidence, even though it's against Leary. All right, so here we are, game two, and we were just kind of talking about it. Some people were like, well, maybe Sobek could have built the castle in a different spot. Maybe maybe that was the difference in game number one. Um, to me, and I'm just going to repeat this for YouTube's sake. Hi, YouTube. I honestly feel like Leary, he had 30 eagles when the villagers were coming. He had six monks. He, was, he had just completed the pikemen. It felt like he was in a really good position to defend that regardless. And Sobek, unfortunately, felt a little committed and, you know, the castle spot maybe didn't feel ideal. Maybe could have been more to the right-hand side. But I think what we saw in the first game, at least, is Sobek's potential, right? And had the castle situation gone a little bit differently, then maybe he would have been fine. And this is Sobek's home act here. We've got Spiral. And uh, we've got Malians for Sobek, which has been kind of underpicked for this map, which is kind of surprising. I can't remember that many games where we've seen Malians. I remember Freakin' Andy did it against Era. But that's the only game that comes to mind. Oh, we actually have seen quite a few Portuguese picks. Uh, a lot of the Portuguese picks actually came in gold. But still, I mean, gold league, platinum league, all high-level stuff. And I think this was Leary's number one sib pick as well. So the way the map's situated, you've got the water areas. Uh, typically, both players are going to take one of the water areas. Where there's three salmon. And then, of course, some shore fish to work with. And then uh, there's also the berry area. So you've got a little fence here. It's just 12 HP. You just got to boop it a couple times and you can free a sheep and a cow. Uh, and I, what I like about this map is the need to take varieties of different resources, but also expand. Um, so, you know, you only have this much stone and this much gold available, but there's stone and gold everywhere on the map. You just have to go look for it. If you know me, I like maps with options, and I like being able to tweak strategy based on those options. And we'll see if they if they change too yes. much. You know, having said all that, usually, though, the openings are very similar on this map. Unless you have, like, humans, for example. But, uh, you know, normally the, the water's just too good to pass up. The both players are going to do that. The only notable difference right now is that Leary is going to send two Vils to build the dock. So that'll be two Vils bringing in the food from Shorefish. But then also, you know, two villagers aren't going to die to a scout. And Sobek has only brought one villager. And guys, I feel like we're at a point now. I've been casting these maps for two and a half months. I feel like we're at a point where this is pretty well established. You do not go out here with one villager without Loom. You just got to send two because you could lose this villager. So, I mean, Sobek's desperate for wins here. He needs multiple wins. If Leary were to look right now, the villager could be killed there. Uh, Sobek, I'm sure, can quick wall, but I think he's a little fortunate Leary hasn't gone that direction right now. And I'm a little surprised Leary didn't do that. But honestly, it's maybe at a point where Leary just assumes it's not even worth going over there. I know my opponent will dock, and my opponent will have two vills. And now Sobek, you can tell Sobek's thought of it. It's funny how that all plays out, right? Leary may be looking for the berries. Will not see a cow in there, so knows that Sobek must have been over there. I think both of these sieves are fantastic for this map. 
I think I, I like the Malians a bit more. Um, and I, I like the Malians. Oh, God. Sobek doesn't need this. Oh, so lucky to dodge the TC. I like the Malians more just because you spend so much on wood. And they save so much on wood, right? So you've already saved wood on the houses, the lumber camp, but then the dock. Then we'll probably see a barracks, potentially a stable archer range. You do tend to see players wall up in their little corner here. So like walls here, walls here. It just feels like it flows very nicely. And Sobek's going to click up a little faster than Leary here. So no, something we've seen from some players is they bring a villager and they try and dock the opponent's water. Be a little risky for either player because it's pretty close to the opponent's base. Did Leary scout this? He didn't check. I feel like Leary's probably just going to go for land pressure. And what I like with the Portuguese is you're working with limited gold because you just have the two tiles. But Portuguese gold units are discounted. But then also, if you're taking the berries and there's plenty of it, uh, you get a little bit of wood from that. So I think both civilizations feel very strong on this map. I can have no questions as far as their strategy. And I think that's like... That's kind of my bummer for Sobek at the moment, is I feel like his strategy's been really solid, but he just hasn't been able to string wins together. Interesting choice from Leary to mill the middle. I hope he ends up taking one of these bushes here, because otherwise the pathing will be pretty awkward, but he's going to make his barracks there. He sees his opponent has a dock. This will probably not surprise him, and uh, Sobek is... Most likely just going to go scouts. Bit of a weird wall here. I think this is a wall you make when you're a little terrified of what Leary might do. Not sure it's necessarily the best wall to place. He does get a hit on Leary's scout. Leary gets to the hill, gets a hit on him. Sobek on the hill. Leary on the hill. Sobek on the hill. Sobek on the hill. Leary on the hill. Sobek on the hill. Both on the hill. And Leary's going to back away now. <laughs> You got to get on those hills, guys. You got to get on those hills. <laughs> I kind of wasn't sure what else to say there. <laughs> the scouts are both standing on their own respective hills now, and the Sobek's scout is going to wait for a spearman. But Leary will feel like he's in a pretty good spot in terms of the res collected now because he's got the berry area, right? So I really like this. Like, the safe play is to just build up towards farms. But I think the most optimal play, as now Sobek's scout goes down to Leary Spearman. That's two games in a row now that's happened, where he's had a, a scout and it's gone down to a spear. Yeah, like, this This is the play that me makes you makes it so you don't die as early. Right? This takes you to Castleage. The play that can give you a better position in Castleage, if you can lock it down, is this. Would make sense, though, with Leary being the favorite, and with Sobek being the underdog, that we would maybe see these, these approaches here. Leary taking what he could consider to be a little bit more risk, but there's higher reward. And then obviously he can farm as well. I also like how Leary's going for more of the full wall approach and Sobek's wall over here. It's not awful, but it's just weird, right? Like you could have done the same amount of walling this way. Oh man, the dock villagers from Sobek have been forgotten here. But not for long. There is a spearman here to protect them. And there's also a fire galley on the way. Four scouts for Leary. Five spearmen for Leary. Holy crap. He also made a, quite a few spears in the previous game, but it, this is like... This is an obscene amount of spearmen. And I don't hate it. You know, I'm not, not necessarily being too critical of it. It's just very interesting because you don't normally see this many spearmen. And Sobek's spearmen got pulled out of position here. And Sobek's going to lose these two villagers. Leary's like, give me first place again, please. I'm not happy that I looked at the leaderboard before the series and saw Viper was ahead of me. No, thank you. I would like to go top of the group. Leary, if he were to win this game, would tie Viper with 10 wins, and then obviously has the potential in the third game to get even more. And, oh man, Leary's just going to dive. I mean, this is not full walled. Leary might assume it is, but it is not. And meanwhile... I mean, I'm just not really seeing the scouts do anything for Sobek. He's just over here now. Looks like he's adding a few more scouts. He's going to group up his scouts to play more defensively. So I'm going to be really curious on the res collected here. I'll check it in a moment. There's a lot of things happening, so I'm going to wait. 
But Sobek has to pull these two scouts back. And then he should have the stronger group if he takes the fight properly and focuses the weak scout down first. Yeah, this is going to be fine for him. Leary's Fudiko looking insane, though. Res collected. Well, it says it's pretty close, but Leary's had more food, which would make sense, right? And just because all the berries brought in, he doesn't have to wait for the farms to kick in, and then he's also farming as well. I really like the eco balance. Does rewall this. Also, his fishing ships have been pretty efficient. Whereas the fishing ships for Sobek haven't been able to take this fish, for example, and have kind of been moving all around. And you just, you know, you, you see the difference, right? Sobek, extremely skilled, very mobile, very active. But, you know, just this feeling of, well, it's inevitable when you've got a player like Leary, one of the best in the world, doing his thing here. And believe me, you feel it when you're in Sobek's position, too. You, you feel it the whole way through. The the It affects your thinking. It affects your ability to play the game properly. Which I think just kind of explains the walls. Look at that. Spearman actually killed two fishing ships. I think Leary's always got something here. Uh, ready to protect himself. And We're going to see a villager go down for Leary. Well played there from Sobek to get a bit of recovery done. And... He drops a market at home to maybe balance out his eco slightly. I think the key, if you're going to wall, by the way, is you do have the full wall because knights will run right past that town center if they get the opportunity. Again, this is Sobek's home map. Leary looking really strong, though. He's just got to be careful here. I feel like Sobek should be diving for a vill. Yeah, even if you lose the scouts at this point, like, just kill the vill. Leary quick wall time. Leary quick wall time. Leary quick wall. Leary, quick wall. Boink. Nope, no quick wall. He's getting old, guys. Oh, he lost his scouts over here as well. Dang. What is Leary now, 20? He's so old. You could just tell. Three years ago, he quick walls that. <laughs> Obviously, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm sure he was focused on other things. Clearly not his scouts, though, so good moment there for Sobek. Wouldn't galleys be better than fires for defense? Nah, galleys... Galleys don't do as much damage. Galleys, you need to invest into upgrades for them to be effective usually. Numbers and upgrades for galleys. One fire is pretty good, but it just... It, micring them is awkward. And fire is going to do a lot more damage a lot faster to things like spearmen, villagers, scouts, even knights. The galley is just not going to do it. So Leary's up, and Leary's going to go double monastery here. Interesting choice. So double stable, double monastery. This is pretty big investment. And I wonder if he TCs the middle. He will. So, you know, this is... I'm really interested in more spiral games, particularly from, like, maybe Hera, if we see that in Hera's final series. Because I remembered Hera playing this before, and he always TC'd the middle. Now, I really didn't see many people TC the middle first thing in Castle. Because if you start to lose the fights, then you, you kind of lose control there. Like, what most players do is they use their map control and they look for this area. And I wonder if, how comfortable Leary is in the map. Doesn't seem like it's a bad thing to TC the middle, right? But because you can't build in this area, it does kind of make the collections awkward. And then you're... The only thing you can really do here is take gold. He's certainly going to spend the gold as Sobek has to damage control the wall up over here. And Sobek's going to make some knights of his own. And there will be monks for Leary. That are super cheap out there. He could maybe start to collect some relics. And he's knocking on the door over here. Here he's going to be knocking on the door as well. And just awkward times for Sobek. And like you spend so much time trying to stabilize. And Leary just expands, expands, expands. And this is similar to the previous game. Where Sobek a little late in reacting. He was able to get the quick walls down in the previous game. And yeah, he does get the walls down here. But the house... Yep, well played. It might even be intentional from him, to be honest, to wait till the last second. Oh, uh, look at Leary's Monk. Oh, man, Leary's Monk just waiting. Converts one of the camels. One of the knights for Leary got through, and the knight's going to run away. Monk for Leary's going to go down, though. Well played, Sobek. If only he had some scouts around right now. And Leary just converts two camels just like that. It, it just feels like this is just going to be monks, 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 monks. 
who even the biggest names, like the players who don't necessarily play a lot of arena are doing a lot more of, and I didn't see the units got in through over here. So disaster for Sobek, who's now lost 12 eco and potentially game ending damage. With the map control that Leary has, that's huge. A frustrating one for Sobek. I'm pretty sure his villagers overchopped the wood line. So he had walled it up, but then Leary found a way in. And now, like, how are you supposed to engage against this? You, you go ahead to engage against it with camels, and you're just going to lose your units to the monks. Like all the best players do, they get a winning position. They're just hoping to hold this and expand their eco lead, and that's what Leary will do. Leary drops the third town center now. Super fast conversions on the camels. Like, I don't know how he got those conversions in so quickly, but monks do have a... a I'm failing to think of the word right now for some reason. There's a variance in how fast or slow conversions can be. It's not the same every single time. This TC is really important to, Sob to Sobek's survival chances, but I can't help but feel like the second Leary sees it, as Sobek moves out here and ends up deleting the knight, I feel like the second Leary sees this, he just siege pushes it. Or he just, you know, takes it down with the knights. There's actually not enough villagers to really sit underneath the TC. And, yep, there's just so many monks here. And they could maybe swap conversions on both sides, but Leary will happily play that game because he has so many more monks. And Leary's got a ridiculous lead. Just crazy. And it all stems from the faster castle age and just getting the, the monks and the knights out a little bit faster. But you know, Sobek's going to try. He will try and take this engagement. Obviously, both players are going to lose units to monks. But Zobek knows my opponent has more army than me. And this game, just as convincing as the previous one. And for Sobek, it, it was all the difference in approach. He opted to take to go for no risk. He didn't take the berries. He didn't take the deer. This is a big focal point of this map. He never even went for it. And I think the reason he didn't do that was because he felt like Leary's the better player and Leary would pick him apart if he did. However, the later Castle Age... All comes down to the fact that, you know, he didn't really take those resources and Leary took full advantage. There was just confidence from Leary that whole way through. And Sobek was maybe thinking defense first and offense last, which which caught up with him there in Castle Age. Um I honestly like it seemed Leary made that look very easy. Everything he did was not so easy, but remember he picked off the villagers here. That was a mistake from Sobek. Leary never lost his villagers over on this side. And Leary didn't really even need to get a full wall down. Leary just played towards army, controlled the game. 15,000 res collected there from Leary. More wood, more food, more gold, and more stone. And uh, again, the same thing remains. For Sobek, you need to hope to get one win here. You are currently in last place. You get one win, you actually move up, and you're like tied for fourth. And who knows what can happen. So, but we're, we're, we'll obviously check the stats after the whole series concludes. But for Sobek, I'm 95% certain that if he does not win this next game, he then needs to 3-0 Tato to have a chance at survival in the final round, which is going to be obviously quite difficult to do. <laughs> so let's hope he has a strong showing in this game. Here we are, game number three. Leary's gone for the Mongols. We have Sobek playing as the Lithuanians. And we've seen both these civs play pretty heavily on this map. Again, I'm Fairly certain Sobek will need three wins of the next four games now to survive here in Tit Titans League Platinum. Obviously, he's just got to take it one win at a time here. And he's picked a really good civilization for this map. There's quite a few relics on the map. Getting those relics can help the Lithuanians. It's very open here. Very hard to wall. And Leary's got a civilization which has also been quite dominant, quite strong on this map in the Mongols. So, big question immediately is, is Leary going to go out and try and lame? Leary is not going to try and lame anything. He's just going to stay at home and try and push in his deer. Take advantage of his hunt bonus. But, yeah, in all honesty, I think this game gets decided by who gets the Castle Age faster. Just based on how these games have played out. Leary in the faster Castle Age in game one started to get the snowball going. Took control of the Golden Stone. Feels like he can never make mistakes from there. But then also just how this map... It was the same in game number two, right? But then also just think about the matchup. 
Mongols have their timings, and their timings are in feudal age due to the faster hunt, but then in early castle age due to the fast potential of step lancers. And Lithuanians are probably going to go into something like camels, so... Uh, or sorry, not camels, uh, knights. And the Mongols will then have camels to potentially go for. So I think if Liri's later to castle age here, basically on the back of a, a scout war, which Sobek will have not died to then, I assume. I think Sobek has some real potential here. And the one thing I am forgetting maybe with Lithuanians... Forget about the monks. What about the, the faster spearmen? I think that could be really helpful in the scout war. Berries seem really close to the player TCs. That could be how every generation has spawned. Like, it's just not a thought that I've really had before. <laughs> you know? We did... You know, anytime we saw, like, an issue with the script, we try and see how we could avoid them. And the one thing we, we tweaked with Graveyards, this would have been like two or three weeks ago, was we pulled the players a bit further away from the edge of the map, which basically makes the full walls less possible. You can see they're a bit further away now, which it makes it difficult to envision any type of full walling here. If there was a sieve that could compete with the Mongol uptimes, Lithuanians would be one of them because of the 100 food that they start with. And we'll see how it goes. People are still talking about monks. To be honest with you, though, though, guys, while Leary did use monks in the previous game, and yes, he got a conversion or two that was quick, there's no way Leary loses that game, even if he goes one Monastery Monks. That position was too strong for him. Great eco. Great control over the game. He had full map control. Sobek ran out of gold. So, obviously, monks were, were utilized there, but... Leary played every aspect of that game better than Sobek did. And Sobek just, he kind of played a little too, uh, li a little too frightened, I feel, on, on that map. With Malians, which is such a flexible civilization to, to build all these different buildings, he just kind of stayed at home. Both players click up at the same time, same build order here. 18 population. Like I said, Lithuanian's pretty good at doing this as well. Obviously, the follow-up food eco won't be quite as good for the Lithuanians because they don't have the hunt bonus. <clears throat> but yeah. <clears throat> um, I, this is what I want to see from Sobek. I want to see him play open and play strong with army numbers, right? Don't want to see lots of walling. Obviously, some small walling is going to be needed, but sometimes there can be this temptation to, to wall this, and then maybe wall here, and wall here. And you start to put it together in your mind, and I really think if you focus heavily on walling, Leary is just going to have more army than you, and Leary can wall later than you, or not at all, and con control the game with army. So, I think Sobek has the potential to do what I said. We'll see, we'll see what he ends up doing here. He is late with his barracks. So, I think the stable will be slightly delayed Barracks is already up for Leary. And Leary will be able to make his stable. Leary's just going to push in one last deer here. Uh, which is from the middle of the map. This is actually deer that Sobek could have taken. They are super close. Leary could walk over to Sobek's base right now and ask for a cup of sugar. If people still do that. <laughs> Guess it depends on the neighborhood. Something tells me Leary's not a big baker. Could be wrong though. The stable's on the way up for Sobek. Leary's going to confirm that with his scout now. Good old-fashioned scout war. Remember, this is Leary's home map. Leary with his small walls on the wood line. Pretty nice wood line for him. He will potentially overchop this. If he walls that up, though, it's fine. The Sobek will have some overchop potential as well. It's kind of like two wood lines kind of morphed into one for Leary, which kind of helps, kind of hurts, because he still is going like, to kind of be more so chopping this direction, but... We'll see how things end up going. Now, the last two games, Sobek lost his starting scout before Leary did. Actually, that's incorrect. The first game, I guess the eagle went down. But Sobek, he continues to run into the early spearmen. And just like that, that seems to be a theme. And Leary's forward already. So you're down two games. You just take some hits on your scouts. It's kind of a lot of pressure right now. <laughs> Leary... Running around, hoping for damage. There is going to be an overchop here for Sobek. It's unlikely Leary engages here, because I think the Vils can group up and kill the scouts, but if Sobek doesn't know, 
then maybe it'll happen. And oh, Sobex, guys, look at this. We've got idols here. He's trying. He's trying to fight this off. This is why I said it's unlikely Leary would go in. But oh God, Sobek's trying to wall it now. Leary's being a real pain. Sobek is going to lose a vill, and he could lose another villager there. And again, it is just Leary with the focus of attack all the time, and he's even going to get away. I oh, know he won't get away with the scout. But it's just another moment where Leary shines due to the focus on the front, and then he picks off another scout here. It is so tricky. Guy's just so good. And then behind it, he's already on eight farms. Whereas Sobek's sitting now at four. It's not going to help matters that he lost villagers on his lumber camp. Leary's just so good at this game. And he's looked amazing in TTL Season 3. Leary had nine wins in group stage in the previous season. And then he looked really good in the playoffs. But like in the group stage, he didn't really look that, that strong. And some would say maybe it was because of the map pool. A few more closed maps. Maybe that's part of it. But Leary, seven kills, four deaths. And Sobek really needs to keep his Spearman alive. Losing two Spearmen like that makes it so awkward. I feel like it, you know, it's, it's easy for us to say, right? But he needed a little bit more patience there. And it seems like he's just completely overwhelmed. Does get the quick walls down. Leary, he hasn't really had many defensive Spearmen. And this is the difference, right? He's like, okay, fine. I don't need Spearman at home. You do, and you're going to lose them anyways. Obviously, Leary, Leary's going to add a few Spearman. Looks like he's checked his wood line. There's actually still a hole here. Which I guess he didn't realize because of the positioning of the trees. If Sobek were to look at that... And Leary just double-checked it, actually. And yeah, that could have been pretty bad for Leary. Sobek looking for damage on the farms... There's still scouts from Leary around right now. But Rez collected in this game. Leary has collected 800 more resources. And I feel like he would have collected more resources even if it wasn't for the, the villager kills. Obviously, the villager kills helped a lot. But just hit the speed at which he's able to add eco while also adding army is insane. A lot of players just can't add this number of farms while also micro these armies. And he's got eight scouts on the field. And he's just going to chase down Sobek now. And Sobek's trying to make a few more scouts behind all this. He's hoping his spearmen can catch up and maybe get a few hits here. Good moment for Sobek. Takes a fight there. Uh, kills a scout, but Leary's still all over him. And this is now where you start to think about, will Leary go up to the castle age? Or will Leary consider the Bloodlines upgrades for his scouts? Or will he make like a lot more Spearmen, a lot more Archers? Because there's still plenty. They're so close, right? There's still so much potential for this game to end here in Feudal Age. So it's a little risky to think about Castle Age. I think Leary was flirting with the idea and has come to the conclusion I have. And it's just, it just make more army here. Engagements happen. Spearmen and scouts for both of them. Leary has more HP, but it matters on where the Spearmen get hits and... At the end of the day, a lot of units died, and it's going to be disgusting there. We've even got, like, elephant carcasses, so it's not the prettiest spot to take a walk on a Sunday afternoon. But uh, I think Leary will be okay. Kind of feels weird now. you got bloodlines for a bunch of weak scouts. But he is going to have archers as well now, and it's not like Sobek scouts are uh, high HP either. Did Sobek get more villagers on wood? He did over here. Okay, and he's going to add a range as well. Sobek needs more scouts. Sobek needs more army in general right now. This army that is coming forward from Leary can end this game and can take Leary above Viper in the standings before they eventually, uh, Leary and Viper, face each other to conclude this group. Just a couple archers help so much with the spearmen. Leary has added a few more scouts as well. And he's going to have the forging upgrade. So he will have more HP on his scouts. Plus he's going to have the attack. Oh my god, he didn't even take a hit here. This micro is insane. Well, you're just playing so good. Like, Sobek with the most relatable game ever. Over chop on the wood line. Scouts getting hit periodically. Leary just flawless, man. This is so, so clean. Kills a villager there. Okay, now he's human. He runs into the TC. Makes me feel better about myself. Thank you, Leary. And Sobek just doesn't have the army to be able to stop this tiny little spear and archer play. 
is going to try. He's added skirms, and the skirms are going to be headed over there. So there they are. He quick walls, he palisades. Leary will obviously loop his scouts around here now, so it's going to be a full group. And Leary look ready to take a fight, and oh my goodness, it's just like every fight goes so well for him. The spearmen are just going to go down, the skirms are going to be pushed away. Here the spearmen for Sobek scouts away. And this fight, maybe not the cleanest from Leary actually, because he does engage against a lot of spearmen, but he will ultimately kill them. And he still has army that his opponent has left to deal with. Leary with three eco kills this game, 27 total kills, only 19 deaths, and Leary will click up to cast leaves. Leary is so good. Behind this, 21 farms. Guys, he spends his resources so perfectly. Like, feels like there's no imbalances. There's no need for a market. He's barely walled. It's just so good. And I have felt like, in this group, that Leary has played the best of everyone. Including Viper, obviously. Love to see Viper prove me wrong. And uh, that series between those two is going to be a banger to close out the group. But, you know, now Leary's on the way to Castle Age. He's got the superior eco. Uh, he's collected 1,100 more resources. So, again, he didn't actually kill that many villagers. He killed two originally in Feudal. He killed one more over the last couple minutes. But he does enough. And then in Castle Age is when he can finish you off here. Seriously smooth stuff as he goes forwards with the scouts here. He does have forging. And misses the vill. It's a bit of a weird one, actually. I feel like a rare misclick for Leary. Sobek. Oh, I've market events turned off. I'm so sorry. Okay, Sobek had to use the market. This always happens on Saturdays because it's the day after community games. And I cannot have this stuff up for community games. Because no offense, community game players. You guys use the market a lot. Um, <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it, but... It's just like my, the whole left side of my screen is just lit up on Friday. So I always remove it and then I always forget. And then moments like these, I was wondering where Sobek's stone went. I thought he had used the mark and I didn't see it. Another villager killed. And now best of luck to you, Sobek, because the skirms don't really offer much. You can't really upgrade them. Your scouts are worse than Leary's scouts. And Leary now, with the Mongols, is going to upgrade to Light Cav. So his Light Cav will have more HP than his standard Light Cav. And he's going to have Crossbow. And Leary wins 3-0, goes up to 11 wins after 4 rounds. Which is 2 more wins than he had in 5 rounds in the group stage in Season 2. Leary is playing lights out Age of Empires. I think Sobek had like a solid showing today. Glimpses of hope. Game number 1, maybe if the castle's in a different position, I don't know. But Leary... I mean, someone now saying, I'd say Leary's played the best compared to everyone, not only in this group. Maybe even a fair statement, Leary has looked incredible. He has looked so good in Titans League. And, uh, you know, best of luck to Viper. Obviously, we'll look at the results here. Uh, but we'll be real excited to see Leary close out his group stage against Viper. Kind of summed this one up already. This was just clean and strong the whole way through. And it's unfortunate for Sobek that he then has to play Tato in his final round. But let's see what this means and, and what the potential is in the group um, as we head over to the Statifrax sheet. We speculated a little bit before this, but I think it's important to make sure we are certain with the actual results. Um, okay, so Leary wins 3-0. Yep, so the good news for Viper is you kind of had to win the series anyways to be first. Um, the bad news for Viper is if Leary were to like 3-0 him or, hear me out, or if Leary 2-1s him and then Tato 3-0s against Sobek, then Viper could actually drop to third place in the playoffs, I believe. Obviously, win or lose, wh whoever wins, sorry, between Leary Viper goes first. It is not guaranteed that whoever loses that actually goes second because there is that slight chance that Tato could overtake Viper. Um, but for Sobek, Sobek's in a rough spot now because Classic Pro's at three wins, Vivi's at two. You need to get to fourth, right? So if you hope for Vivi to get a 3-0... 
like if Vivi goes 3-0 here, let's just say against Classic Pro, which I don't think will happen. I think Classic Pro is the favorite, which makes it even worse for Sobek. But that's five, right? You've got to beat five. If Classic Pro wins like 2-1, maybe. Okay, so here, he needs to hope for a Vivi 2-1 victory. Then he still needs to get to five. Um, if Classic Pro goes 2-1 versus Vivi, here five. And you can't beat Classic Pro's five because Classic Pro has one more set. So, like, long story short, Sobek needs to get to five wins, and he's only at two, and his final series is against Tato, who's going to be incredibly motivated to maybe somehow pass Viper. So, I think Sobek's in a really tough position here. But let's let's say Tato gets the 3-0, right? Obviously, rip Sobek then, but I want to see the Viper Leary series, what that means. Okay, so if Tato gets the 3-0 versus Sobek, if Viper loses versus Leary, Viper goes third into the playoffs. And then if Viper wins, he goes first, and then Leary goes second. So there's no world in which Leary really goes third right now. Um, it is only first or second. Viper either first, second, or third. So that final series is a pretty big deal. And let me actually give you... Let me paint a greater picture for you. We have the projected playoffs. So as things stand right now... Um, or stood before, actually. This is where the projected playoffs would have been. However, we know Leary's first now. So Leary would be here. Uh, can you guys see my mouse cursor? Have you guys not seen my mouse cursor all day? What? Nobody said anything. That's so weird. Oh my god. I'm so sorry, everybody. I cast the whole series without you being able to see my cursor. Anyways, so Leary is projected to go here now based on the results, right? Which means Viper would be projected to go here, second in Group D. Um, if Viper were to, say, fall to third, or whoever ends up being in third, they are likely going to be up against whoever loses, or they will be up against whoever loses between Doubt and Yo to close out their group. So, like, this is huge, right? Like, big names falling into the round of 12 is huge. Not to mention that if you end up winning your group, you're separate from everyone else who wins their group. Um, I mean, should say that like this could easily be Yo, this could easily be Freakin' Andy, um, this could easily be Veleza or Dogal. It's far from certain right now on what things look like. But anyways, I just kind of wanted to talk through things. For those watching later on on YouTube, we have four more, well, four and a half more days, I suppose, of group stage. And uh, for you guys, that means about like, I think 12 or 13 more sets. And then we'll move into the playoffs. So we're getting very close to the end. Hope you guys are enjoying. And uh, good series there from Leary. Leary's looking amazing right now.